Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hey guys, welcome to Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Today we're joined by Marnie and Megan. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Marnie. Um, I study at Trinity and I'm going into my third year um, studying English. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, I'm also at Trinity and I'm going into third year doing chemistry. Nice. <clears throat> so today um, we're going to be talking about how to manage uh, the Oxford workload. Um, quite a big topic. Um, so first question, uh, starting off, uh, how much workload does the average uh, undergraduate Oxford have, would you guys say, uh, starting with Megan? Um, it kind of depends on what subject you do, um, which I'm sure we'll get onto, but um, it's kind of, it would be around 40 hours a week, so it's kind of like a full working week. Yeah, Marnie, would you agree? Yeah, I think complete agreement. I'd say like, obviously some weeks a bit heavier than others, like maybe if you've got like tighter deadlines or kind of, mm. there's something that you're really, really passionate about that you really want to focus um, an extra bit of time on, like in terms of different topics or kind of um, ideas. But yeah, very generally, 40 hours a week um, to eight week term. Yeah, and that's a good point actually about the deadlines, because I know from when me and Megan do chemistry, <laughs> Uh, some weeks will have more deadlines and they're like we have like three pieces of work due and then the, the next week mm -hmm. there might be one just for whatever reason if the tutor has to delay something and I think it can be the same uh, for essay subjects just like it not being evenly spread all the time is that the case Marnie? Yeah completely and I think that's when sometimes it's quite nice knowing you'll have a breather maybe a bit like the week afterwards and then it will just be kind of like um charging kind of like full speed ahead just for one week so it's interesting yeah I say it does average out to that 40 hours but yeah there'll be some weeks where you're going to have to be a bit more willing to like push a little further but it's all nice because you know just kind of the week afterwards you can kind of a bit more tranquil um so it does it's mm. nice reward at the end of it though yeah no there's definitely a feeling of sometimes when you've got quite a lot of work that one week that you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and you know that next week yeah <laughs> <laughs> that next week is going to be more chill but you've got to get this done now um, no, that's, that's definitely a nostalgic feeling. Um, <clears throat> so um, in what ways um, do you guys um, get time off work? Um, and how does that help um, in managing uh, your workload? Uh, starting with Marnie. Um, so I play the French horn in um, the New Orchestra and also play kind of several sports. So I think I've made all that well, I think most of my rehearsals and kind of training times are always in the evening anyway. So it's quite nice to be able to know that I have to stop work at like six and I have to kind of then take time out to kind of like have dinner and relax and then kind of do what I've got to do. So that's how I kind of, it's quite motivating as well having really knowing that like I can really kind of push myself to get my work done and then have that evening off. Um, and I say like sports is obviously really good to kind of like doing something completely different. Like obviously very like kind of intellectually and like mentally challenging throughout the day, but then I can like change to the physical in in the evening um and kind of just get tired in a slightly different way and then I think orchestra is nice because it's that creative outlet mm. so I said like taking to work they're both kind of different physical also creative ways in which to kind of not necessarily distract from the work so I think it was quite nice that work is always a nice thread throughout the whole week so it's not completely forgetting about it but it is nice to just kind of absorb yourself in something completely different um so I say taking time off through extracurriculars is quite an important um, thing for me. But then also just like kind of uh, maybe going out for dinner, seeing particular people that maybe if you're not working with them during the day, it's quite nice to then like take that time out in the evening to like um, spend time with people that you don't normally get the opportunity to during the day. Oh, uh -huh, nice. Yeah, I think there's like three really good uh, things that you highlighted there, like social, creative and um, physical, like sport, exercise outlets. Um, that it's like, as if that are like really good that, that then help you have like more energy when you go back to work for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, completely. And I think a lot of people talk about like having a, like, a social outlet um, in the evenings, but there are, uh, there are definitely other things that lots of people can do um, that doesn't have to always be social. That also yeah, doesn't, exactly. have to be, um, doesn't have to be work. Like you were saying with um, doing exercise um, and uh, uh, playing the French horn, et cetera. Uh, Megan? Yeah, and that's, yeah. No, go for it, sorry. <laughs> sorry and just because there's those also quite social as well so even though obviously it's not like a hundred percent you just know that's like deliberately a social activity you still get mm. to see like people that 
aren't in your college and maybe like completely different year groups and like different completely different subjects as well so yeah it's a nice kind of marriage of kind of the social but also yeah creative or physical um, yeah I just thought of another thing as well um a nice thing that's also social but um but also like something that everyone does every day is um going to hall um for lunch yeah. um because um you're like you'd go to hall and like and there's so many people that you can just like have your meal with and have to have a chat to it's like your 20 minute break from work sometimes a bit more than 20 minutes um, um but yeah like to, yeah so you, you, there's a there's always a common theme of people like not wanting to go back or well, not always but you know you've got work to do but you're having such a great time talking to your friends um and it's great to have that like every every afternoon and uh, evening and sometimes morning as well you go to school so um uh, Megan, uh, how would you um, how do you um, spend time <coughs> off uh, doing chemistry, and how does that help with the managing the workload? I definitely agree with what Marnie said. It's that it's like really important to have other outlets. So I'm in the college choir, um, and that's like rehearsals every week, and then um, a service every week, and that is also social. But it's so important to just have a few hours where you don't need to be thinking about your work, you're not engaging in your work, you do something completely different, completely creative. Um, and it's so important to have that outlet. And definitely also just like, even if you're not big into sports or big into exercise, I don't really do sports. Um, I just go for walks. There are so many really, really nice, like green spaces in Oxford, like Uni Parks, Port Meadow, um, and just be able to get out of your head and just not, not put pressure on yourself to be working 24 7 um <clears throat> completely clear your mind and like take the pressure off a bit so that when you do need to do work you can like go all in mm. that, yeah that's actually a massive thing that i hadn't thought of but like it's so so heavily packed by like all like welfare resources like psychology mm -hmm. that how um going for a walk as like a regular routine is like so good for your mental health um and just like in general stress if you're stressed about work trying to uh, you've got a lot of work going for a, a walk um it really does definitely does help clear your head for sure um definitely i also say like rely on each other so there's been a lot of times that i've been super stressed and you can just message a friend and go for a walk with them go around for a cup mm -hmm. of tea just have like a half an hour hour chat and um, yeah i wouldn't have made it through if i couldn't do that yeah and um and also um there's something about nature as well as you're saying about the uni university parks i mean the, the buildings are also beautiful at oxford but something about nature that really does just sort of is quite calming i can't really explain it yeah. but i think that's quite a universal yeah. universal feeling um and the thing that you were saying about um just like some sort of exercise i i found that when I would be going to the gym or um, playing like lots of badminton um, that if I felt even though like physically I felt like ex like tired from like doing sport but I also felt very energetic because I just like done some fresh sport and um, and like I feel like if you feel like physically confident and like body confident that you like oh like, today is a good day I've done some exercise then it also makes you feel more confident when you go to do your work whereas like compared to a different day where say like I haven't done anything throughout the day and I just sort of been procrastinating over one piece of work you do sort of feel a bit a little bit sluggish and you, like whereas um yeah uh, uh, two good points um so moving on to the next question uh this is one for you Marnie um how many essays um, does like the average either English or humanity student uh, get per term, would you say? Hmm. So I'd say even maybe like one to two a week, but then sometimes a little bit more. So it depends on what you kind of have maybe, for most humanities, you'll have your kind of standard, maybe 1,500, 2,000 word essays, and you generally get one of those a week, but then you can have kind of, so I know for English as well as languages, you can get kind of commentaries, which are a lot shorter. So those are kind of smaller essays, maybe kind of a thousand words, but you can have a few of those kind of scattered throughout terms. So I'd say like anything between like eight to 12 essays seems to be quite normal. I'd say English always seems to be like maybe like bang on in the middle, like 10 seems to be the norm. So I'd, yeah, I'd say that's kind of 
don't want to speak for every um, mm. single humanity. But I'd say that's kind of roughly it. And obviously, I think there are just, <clears throat> as I was saying before, like there are some terms that you might just have a bit more in terms of kind of the deadlines. And you might have to push a bit more to get content finished. So you might kind of step into like 12, maybe even like 13, 14. Because um, we do also get essays set over um, the back. So mm. during the holidays, there's always going to be maybe normally at least two essays to get done. And then that kind of still um, adds up to, I suppose, the overall kind of essay load over term, kind of like it still kind of contributes to that. So, yeah, I'd say around kind of just um, skimming into double digits or like mm. um, you'll get solidly into 10 essays a term, I think. And um, so like for someone who like, doesn't know like how long an essay takes, like how long does an essay take uh, roughly hmm. again it just really depends i think sometimes on the resources that are available but then saying that i think oxford literally has like any book kind of under the sun you can get but obviously sometimes other people are taking out that book and it might you might just be a little bit behind in terms of like um organizing when you need to take that book out and seeing where else it's available because mm. obviously like in the English library and if that book's kind of out of that library it's quite difficult to get sometimes but um so taking that into account as well as like general reading time, thinking time, like you're talking maybe like kind of three days normally, I'd say I'd put into an essay. Um, very kind of like one day kind of doing lots of reading, the second day tailing off that kind of critical reading, planning the essay, starting to write it, and the third day like writing it and like going over the essay. Um, I wouldn't really spend any longer than that in case, it's, or unless it's like a really kind of like important essay that I might really, really like know that I'm going to write into my kind of like finals or something that I'm like mm. this is kind of the one then I would spend a bit longer but on average um it's difficult to let go of the perfectionist kind of streak but I'd say three days um no yeah for sure I think relatable for many undergraduates letting go of the perfectionist streak which we'll get back to, back, uh, back to you later but um yes. can you <laughs> um can you comment on like uh, roughly like compared to um that for uni or like some other unis like does the do you get more essays studying at um, oxford would you say sure i think obviously there's cambridge i'd say i think actually has slightly more <laughs> what i've had for um at least for english i think they have slightly more um i say other universities definitely i think from what i've heard they kind of we don't really go into maybe like single digits in terms of maybe like kind of under 10 and basically um, and probably for lots of them maybe under five so you are definitely talking about like at least like yeah double um mm -hmm. kind of the number of essays or like maybe even triple it really depends um but yeah i just think it's so part of kind of the oxford's like oxford's way in which kind of really pay for exams that you're constantly writing um they really want to kind of keep that kind of focus throughout the whole term just because i think um writing style i think is really important um just for like taking exams and I guess for like your own development so they yeah Oxford just really prioritizes I think keeping up the writing every single week <laughs> and um for chemistry Megan um for problem sheets how many uh like and uh, just for anyone who doesn't know problem sheets are for like most of the sciences and maths um a set of questions on a topic that you'll be learning um that week um to answer the questions would be probably quite challenging and they're obviously revolved around the degree um and um and you have like tend to be the week uh to do them and you might for some subjects you get more than one problem sheet well i guess that was the question i was gonna ask and <laughs> megan how many problem sheets do you get per week for chemistry i mean it varies a lot with different colleges so at trinity mm. we tend to get one problem sheet a week um but in our other colleges um you might get multiple problem sheets but then they'd be a bit shorter um and so we typically have one per week so it's about eight per term um it's more like nine, nine per term because sometimes nine or ten per term um because we get a few during the holidays um that we just don't have time to do um yeah yeah and how long how how long would, does does the problem sheet like take you the week would you say um yeah like a, alongside all of the other work mm. you're doing like alongside That's labs true. alongside yeah. lectures um it generally does take the week um if you do really knuckle down you can get it down you can get it done in plenty of time um mm. but obviously if it's a really busy week it will take you the whole week to do it if you're busy with lots mm. of other things yeah so that's a good point because like with chemistry um you have like the labs the two lectures every morning a few mm. tutes with your tutor going through the work that you did last week um 
Is there anything else? I mean, and then like then the problem sheets. So how, so like how do you manage doing your problem sheets when you've got to, when you've got all of these set in stone scheduled times, um, timed things that you've got to do like every Thursday, Friday, you would have your six hour labs. How do you manage working around that? Um, I think it definitely, in our case, because we tend to get the problem sheets all towards the start of the term, you can kind of plan it in really easily. Um, you can look at the problem sheet and you can see with your lecture timetable, oh, we won't have finished the lecture course, so this problem sheet is going to take me a little bit longer because I'm going to have to pre-read for it. And therefore you can kind of plan it in. I can say, well, obviously Thursday, Friday, I've got labs. I'm not getting any of this done. Mm -hmm. but I want to get it done. I'm going to get it done by Wednesday. And then that's like your deadline. Mm -hmm. Because then if I don't get it done by Wednesday, something else has come up or, you know, I've been too busy, I still have Saturday and Sunday to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe just setting an earlier deadline because then it doesn't matter if you don't get it done in time is really, really helpful. Yeah. So, um, how important would you both say is organisation into managing the workload, uh, starting with money? Ooh, I'd say organisation is kind of key. Um, <laughs> um, I think there's a risk of becoming kind of too hyper organised and kind of stressing yourself out in terms of being like, I've got to do everything down to the hour, to like down to the minute, and like really restricting yourself um, in terms of kind of, yeah, just making it as if kind of like, you can get this done by three o'clock when I think Megan's right in terms of having that kind of like freedom on um, either side of a deadline or kind of like your own personal mm -hmm. deadlines is quite helpful. So I say staying organized is like, yeah, incredibly important. But I think it's also just not putting too much pressure on yourself. Cause as Megan was saying as well, you can find like on the weekend, if you really want to catch up, I think the weekend for me is personally like, mm -hmm. I try not do that much work on the weekend. I love taking that time off to like kind of explore things in Oxford and kind of do things I probably wouldn't get time to do during like the working week. But um, yeah, you can easily kind of, in terms of organisation, I think during the week is where I'd be a little bit more regimented and kind of strict with myself. So being like, I would realistically like to get like X kind of topic on Friday afternoon, but knowing that you can kind of leak into the weekend. Um, but I'd say like, yeah, keeping organised is kind of very important and at least being quite strict with like, if you want to finish work at like 6pm or 7pm, if you want to start work at a certain time. So I'd say like, it's all about being realistic as well. But I think... Um, the sooner you can kind of get organized and I think also kind of keep relaxed with how you're being organized because I know quite a few people will do so much pressure on yourself to kind of get something done by a certain time and to do a certain activity in the evening but I think if you just kind of keep relaxed and kind of tell yourself I will get this done or I do actually have extra time to do this the day after um, then that helps you actually kind of just stay quite relaxed and ultimately I think you'd be more likely to get it done so I think there's being organized and strict, but also mm. kind of marrying that with like um, staying relaxed as well. Yeah, I think it is like a very difficult balance between like wanting to be like very organized, but then also there are like it, it is also like a, I guess like the next level of like efficiency or is being able to say actually in this moment, I am not in a fit, healthy mind to do this. And it wasn't planned. And this is unplanned. And I'm going to. Yeah not look at this and then actually being okay with that and not feeling guilty is like a really hard place to find. And I like with what you were saying about um, organization and how I personally fit my timetable is that, I mean, at the moment for quarantine, I would like before lunch, like get any admin stuff that I've got to do like this podcast right now. Um, <laughs> and, um, and after mid after midday, if I, ha if there's things I wanted to do and I hadn't managed to get them done, unless they're, they're bound by a deadline but, um, but if they're not bound by a deadline I'll just like leave it for tomorrow like after midday is you know, it's too late I'm going to move my mind on to the next thing and then at the moment that'll be chemistry and I'll do a bit of chemistry in the afternoon and then after like dinner and the evening starts is like even if there's any chemistry that I had planned that I wants to get done um, it's like if the evening started and um, I'm going to like shift my focus elsewhere and that'll be normally just like you no know, reading or like badminton etc and I think like what you guys saying like having scheduled times to do different things means that also gives your mind a piece like gives your mind peace because you know like in the evening as you're saying like when you're doing the orchestra you know that's your time to relax and you can like forgive yourself for not thinking about your uni work because if you if you weren't organized then 
you would just always think about your uni work all the time <laughs> when you're trying to do other things um for sure yeah no, completely and i've always think kind of the busiest people that i know have often been the most kind of like efficient with their time and the most organized because i think it's probably something that you'll be able to glean from this conversation quite well anyway but yeah I just think sometimes not being stupidly busy um that you're going to be like kind of losing a lot of sleep over it but yeah I often think kind of the busy you are you're kind of naturally then a bit strict with yourself and naturally like those deadlines just become more ingrained mm. in kind of your general program because you're so used to having to like fit things in so um yeah sometimes it's you shouldn't be too scared of being a little bit busy yeah, then maybe you think you can handle and often you actually can. And it just kind of helps stimulate that efficiency that you maybe wouldn't have had the kind of push to kind of discover otherwise. Mm, no, that's actually a really good point as well. Um, would you would you agree, Megan, or have you found that um, if you're really busy with lots of things that there's, because my friends have also said this, that there's a feeling of it's okay because the work will get done no matter what, if that, if that makes sense. Or would you... It's careful not to um, not to try and sacrifice too much to get the work done. Mm. But also, I think what you were saying, it's really important not to feel guilty. Um, like, I'm quite strict with myself, as in, I know I don't cope with a lack of sleep very well. I can't focus. I can't work. And so I'm very strict. I'm like, 10 o'clock, I'm not doing any more work. That's it. doesn't matter if it's not done. Um, you just kind of have to know where your limits are. And it's going to bed not feeling guilty for not having finished the work is really important like not to put the pressure on yourself there's enough pressure as it is so don't make it worse for yourself <laughs> you know be not, be kind to yourself um so yeah being able to really draw the boundaries of yeah i cannot work i cannot work part this past this time these three hours after me can be relaxing or whatever you have to have boundaries for yourself it's really important uh, so obviously we do the same subject man um and i've always been in awe in how organized you've been and i was i wanted to ask does does like disciplining your do, would you say and would, like, would you both say that um that if you when you start to discipline yourself in having like uh like i know getting the work done sooner rather than later does that like does that build a momentum that makes it easier to continue that once you've started uh so yeah would you would you agree megan no what would you say I'd, I'd definitely say it makes it easier um, because say, you know, we get the problem sheets a little bit in advance um, and so you might start one two days earlier and that then means that you've got an extra four days mm. to do the next problem sheet and so if you can start that one a little bit earlier, like it makes the whole thing a lot easier because then when you do have a really busy week, um, you know, if we've got lots of labs or um, really difficult tutorials that week, when you do have a busy week, you can then let yourself fall back mm -hmm. into like the normal schedule and you don't need to feel really stressed that you're falling behind because mm -hmm. you're just falling back like into where yeah. you should be. Um, but obviously it's really important not to press yourself to work ahead too much because then you're not actually, um, you're not actually taking any of it in. If you're like, I have to work two weeks ahead, you're not learning anything. You're just getting the work done. So yeah. It is good to be organised and sometimes work ahead if you have a bit of time. Um, but again, don't put pressure on yourself. Let yourself fall back if you're busy, if you're stressed. Yeah, and so I guess that, that balance of like working as much as you want to without, but, but not entering that realm of stress where now it's mm. stressful and you're working. Uh, yeah. so, Marnie, would you say um, about the being disciplined and planning ahead like gives a momentum that makes it easier to continue that as like a lifestyle yeah I think 100% actually um like I'm in complete agreement with Megan so in terms of like staying ahead I'd say I mean for me personally as an English student if I stay maybe like around on average maybe like two or three days ahead or that generally translates into always being like an essay ahead um so I kind of make sure that all the work that we are set over the vacation I actually make sure I do it because I just know how like that, then when I get back to term it just makes it so much easier and exactly what you were saying Megan in terms of like you get to that maybe really busy week you're not actually really stressed you're not doing anything close to like an all-nighter you're actually just lapsing back into the same kind of timeline as everyone else so you're not actually as stressed you're very much still on top of it but you're just aware that like um yeah you're just back in like the general sort of kind of um 
time span and like grind as everyone else um so yeah I'd always say staying a bit ahead is a really good thing but it is again quite nice if you are kind of at the same like not too far ahead as Megan was saying so at least you can still talk with your peers I find that's still something that's really useful so like if an essay is really tricky and if we need to kind of go through the reading together or kind of like it would be more fruitful to discuss what we think about the text before coming up with our essay um, essay ideas like then there's a risk that you're kind of losing out on that sort of kind of social aspect of your subject as well so it's difficult to get that timing exactly right but I'd always say a couple of days or like yeah yeah an essay ahead generally seems to work because there's always a bit of an overlap um that someone is going to have read the text but maybe you're in the planning stages so at least you can still kind of talk about it but um I'd say that yeah just really in agreement with Megan it just means when you get to like a really busy week it's not like a massive wave you're actually just like okay you can kind of still like surf along it and it's not too stressful so like I think that one thing that we've like both been like we were talking around about is that how doing like pre-planning like planning ahead is like making like your self-imposed deadlines rather than working to the deadline mm. and obviously that requires like a lot of discipline but um would you both say that after you do that enough times that it can become habit and that is just how you do your work like with these self-imposed deadlines that's not always hard if that makes sense it's the first yeah. time i definitely say that is kind of how i'm used to working now like initially it feels a bit silly um, mm. you know like why am i working ahead but it is it's quite normal i'm used to working to my own deadlines now so it doesn't mm. feel like i'm under loads of pressure yeah would you agree Marnie? yeah completely the same i think i always try to aim for like half a day or a day before um mm. normally kind of on the side of the whole day before yeah as megan said it's just kind of like your own deadline is always going to be obviously kind of ahead of um the basis deadline um mm. and yeah it's just it's just really helpful because then you do have yeah that breathing room and yeah it just was mm. interesting but i do think it does become habit because you can't help but then adjust to your time i think it's then even it would be trickier to almost not once you get that momentum once mm. you're kind of prioritizing your deadlines um i think my tutors still find it a bit bizarre because none of the other students really do it but like i'm always like ahead which is fine but I think it yeah it just takes off that kind of I know then that I'm not going to get like a slap on the wrist for, like being late which is also mm -hmm. kind of like you just don't want that on the tutor's behalf like I want the best feedback possible and like the best rapport with them so like it feeds into that culture as well so it's like they know that you're taking subject seriously but also on your own behalf you're keeping organized and like happier and healthier like mentally not mm -hmm. like being stressed about deadlines so it is a good yeah I think you just your like kind of mind and body prefers that way of kind of working and like alleviating the stress so I think you just kind of want more of that mm. so I always find I just can actually add to that um, every turn. I think also like um, it's pretty very much against the grain of pretty much everything we've just been say, talking about but so in my first year I'd say that I was very much similar to what you both were saying about working ahead self-imposed deadlines I always enjoyed that breathing room and then like second year workload got very intensive chemistry and I learned a new skill of um, being able to enjoy that adrenaline of the deadline and um, and um, I know if you if you I was able to see the deadline is not stressful because at the end of the day it's just a piece of work like my tutors aren't going to they're just gonna like if I was to be a bit late they're probably actually almost always very understanding so there's like there's actually nothing there's it's not the end of the world by far and I think I know a lot of other people as well I mean, it's a, it's not something to do all the time, definitely, but I think you can, there's some times where you have this feeling that, oh, I've got to get the work done now, and that can be enjoyable. If you do, if you see that as like a non, from a non-stressful point of view, you can like enjoy that rush, you hand it in, and then you can like relax. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, because I remember in first year, if, because um, I always worked a little bit ahead, um, if there was like, if I had like an hour or two hours left to the deadline, um, hour or two hours left to the deadline, um, uh, well, oh, um, I would always um, feel like, oh no, I've only got like two hours left, it's too stressful, I'm not going to be able to get this question done, I'm just going to hand it in as it is. Um, and so I also, but the, so being able to sort of be like being calm with how little time you've got left and getting it done is also like a different aspect of um managing your workload like a non from a non-stressful point of view um, um so going back on uh, what you were saying uh Marnie, about um 
working with um, other people and how that can like the social side um, being really nice. Um, I just wanted to ask you both, um, what are the pros and cons of studying with others and the studying with others, how does that affect with managing the workload? Um, starting with Megan. I'd say definitely, like, it's mostly pros. Um, a lot of the time, like, particularly with problem sheets or with um, labs, um, you kind of have to work with other people to get it done. Um, you know, problem sheets, there might be one question I find super easy and I understand straight away mm. and I can do it. But then the next one I can't understand at all. And so working with someone else means you're much more likely to both be able to understand all the questions and you can, like having someone else explain it to you and explaining it to someone else can really help you understand it properly. Mm. And definitely with labs, you know, a lot of the questions are kind of subjective based on your data. And so getting a second opinion can be really, really useful. Mm. <clears throat> um, but obviously sometimes, you know, if, if you're doing different problem sheets you can't work together mm, yeah. and sometimes it, it can make you a little bit less efficient just because obviously like a discussion is less efficient than just doing it yourself but way more pros and cons yeah i think it was also uh, a good point you were saying about um the problem sheet um i think there's there's a massive difference between like copying your friend's answer answer and just copying it word for words and then like not and then like moving on compared and like because you're doing that because you don't want you, know, you don't you're afraid of what the tutor will say if you give in no work um which also like as a whole idea doesn't doesn't completely make sense to me at least because your tutor doesn't have like it's your degree like they like whatever they think mm. doesn't really matter but um so there's a difference between <laughs> there's a difference between um <laughs> copying someone and asking someone like oh have you done this question oh you have like mm. can you explain it to me and then like and keep asking them for that explanation until then you then understand it and then mm. and then and then that builds the idea of like two brains are better than one and you've done like half of the work someone else has done the 25 percent you haven't and you learn from them and you just learn then you come into your shoot with like 75 percent of the work done and 75 percent of the work understood which is better than the amount you would have understood by yourself, um, in my opinion. Yeah, so definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, how does it work? How would you say a money for humanities? Um, is it similar? Hmm. Yeah, I'd say I think definitely more pros and cons because I think also working with people, they like force you to really take that time out. So like taking a break together. Like I think I can sometimes get like really lost in thought, lost in my work, and it will go from like two in the afternoon to six in the evening. I'm like, oh wow. And I just don't really like, it is good because it means the focus is there, but then it is so nice when you're with a friend and you're both, maybe both know your focus is waning and like, you know that if you're on your own, you might just go on your phone and you're a bit like, that's a waste of time. But if you're like really strict with a friend, sometimes you can be like, okay, we're both getting a bit annoying now. <clears throat> Let's just kind of go outside, go for a little like five minute walk, <clears throat> maybe like grab a coffee, have a chat and then go back. So I think that's something I've really appreciated working with friends because you're both like, yeah, just really helping each other out. Like maybe um with humanities it's a little trickier to kind of have that same rapport in terms of always being able to help each other out with like problem sheets because I think a lot mm. of the time you're on completely different kind of concepts and ideas that you're wanting to focus on in your essay so it doesn't always translate that well to helping each other but maybe on like that mental social side I find it really good but I think again it does also depend on what stage of work you're at so sometimes if I'm like I've really really got to just like focus like just do me for the next like couple of hours and not work with anyone then I will just kind of go off if it's like mm. maybe really kind of like dense material to read through which I know that like I wouldn't even listen to music and like work at the same time too and I always listen to music that sort of work I wouldn't really work with someone I'd try my hardest to like find a dark hole in the library and just kind of <laughs> get down to it so um yeah 100% though I think libraries are that like lovely welcoming space to like work with people and I think the whole idea of the library anyway like really supports that you should be working with people for the majority of the time I think it's really nice to do that um and yeah, I think it's a general kind of a little nice dash of peer pressure as well. Because if everyone's working around you exactly. and if your friends are actually really focused, you're like, oh, I, I really should fix as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like it it so is like, yeah. no, sorry, Karen. I know, I just say, yeah. So basically, in a, a complete agreement with Megan. <laughs> Again, like, yeah, <laughs> no. studying with people is really good. I think it's, it's definitely so true how encouraging it is working, like, in the, working in the library and especially if you're with your friends that they're working as well because then you don't have to find that motivation by yourself it's so much easier when yeah. you're going with someone i think it's also um a good point that you made about um sometimes you do just need to like focus with your work um so i know that if i'm like working with other people with a problem sheet 
um, I think a lot of people, what they'll do is that they'll give a problem sheet a real good crack by themselves. Um, and then once you've done that, like, gone over the sheets, then you'll come together to compare answers. And I think that's like a really productive way. Um, because, because sometimes if I try to start a problem sheet with someone else, I do, I do personally, and I think a lot of people feel like this, that sometimes you just need that space to just be able to go into it by yourself because you can't really focus if your friend's there who's also doing the same work because there's that temptation of talking and then talking not on the topic and then you're just talking and you're not mm -hmm. doing the whereas like discussing over your answers I think yeah they're two very different things and I definitely agree that sometimes you just need to knuckle down and working with someone who's who's doing the same work as you can be like a distraction sometimes depending on how you how you um meet them but then to combat that I personally <clears throat> as you're saying about the library um really like <clears throat> working next to people with my friends um who are doing different subjects because like we'll go to the library go do our work um and we like do the work we're still doing the work independently I'm doing that work that um I need to really focus but um I'm still with someone and it's like I think that's so much uh, nicer a lot of the time than working by myself unless I really need complete uh isolation which would be a yeah uh, grinding out that hard deadline uh, coming up, coming up. Um, so something that we were talking about before, um, um, and I think it is really integral about uh, managing a uh, workload. Um, how important is efficiency um, with uh, managing your workload? Um, so yeah, starting, starting with Megan. Um, it, like, efficiency is really key. Um, there have been like, particularly in first year, I think when I haven't quite figured it out, um, there have been times where you can spend the whole day doing something and you just sit back and go, I've done nothing, I've, I've got nothing done today. Um, and it's really demoralising. And so it's really important, like, if you're feeling like that, if you're not being efficient, you know, change where you're working, um, go to a different library, work in your room, maybe work in a cafe, or um, try and see a friend or go for a walk to, like, really reset your headspace. Because... If you're working and you're not being, if you're not really getting anything done, you're just going to stress yourself out if you keep mm. working, keep trying to get stuff done. So it's really important that you kind of recognise, I'm not in the right headspace to work. I need to reset, go do something else for half an hour or see a friend or something. And then when you come back, um, you can actually get work done and you can feel much better about it. So are we in a common agreement that more hours on spending on work does not necessarily equal uh, the right, right way, for, right way forward. Um, yeah, more hours yeah, is so. not more work done. Yes, that's that's a better way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> as yeah, as a lot more concise. Um, and yeah, Ma um, Marnie, how how have you? Um, how do you uh, be efficient? I guess um, with your work, is there any specific things you can do? I think it's almost quite just silly, quite basic things. But I think going back to like maybe having a really good kind of like playlist to work through as well. So I'm that sort of person that like has to listen to music because I know that I'd almost get more distracted not listening to music. Um, mm, yeah. it's one of, I guess it's, guess it's a kind of <laughs> character trait. Um, so always getting quite a good playlist, um, generally um, like classical or jazz, because like, my work is quite nice. So that always, it kind of doesn't necessarily get a rhythm into your work, but like it's just a really nice kind of like supporting and just makes kind of, um, if your mind does wander, it's always wandering to quite a nice kind of like musical place and you can always go back. So like, your mind's kind of not getting too distracted by your surroundings either because I just feel like I'm in my little bubble. Um, how else would I stay efficient? I think it's what helps me is not giving myself like, um, so when I kind of like plan my day, I don't do it down to the hour. I thought that's even more stressful. If someone's like, oh, I've got to do this between 10 and 11. I'm like, I'll give myself like two blocks of time. So just like the morning and the afternoon. And it sounds like counterintuitive, but actually giving yourself a wider expanse of time, you're then... I end up doing it quicker because it's just less of a pressure and then I actually end up having more time so I think um giving yourself that flexibility is often just a nice way to like relax yourself into going into the work rather than starting that work immediately quite stressed and quite intimidated by the fact that you set yourself a kind of ridiculous kind of like hour to do something um and I think also kind of simple things that you'll be told like throughout like, your whole life but just eating well sleeping is so important um doing the exercise be it in the morning or the evening um having always like a bottle of water as well and like um 
I think also the environment's really, really important. So as Megan was saying earlier, like if you are genuinely just not focusing in a particular environment or if it is a bit kind of dingy or it isn't, isn't just particularly inspiring, really good to move somewhere where like I find the libraries are often the most like, the busiest. I like the most because like you often get kind of a whole range of like academics where they're really serious. You can see they're just like, they're working hard and you kind of feel like I need to kind of like make it kind of worth my time being here. And also like you kind of, I guess it's a very like, um, you kind of feel like you just have to be on that level of the professors so then you're like really like trying to like work hard as well so I think it is a combination of like not really anything specific in terms of like it's not really an intelligence thing that you're just if you're like you just think maybe you're really really clever you can just be more efficient it's definitely simple mm. things like to do with like your health and like your physical surroundings and like um yeah I'd say those are actually the key things um I wouldn't really attribute it to anything like you're a superhuman it's just really kind of like um kind of basic things to do with your health really I think also uh, one thing that I really relate to what you're saying is that uh, I think changing your environment throughout the day of where you're working just feels like feels like you're starting again, like you're starting work, but really you had been just working the whole day, but you're just, you just changed where you're, and I would like bounce between cafes and libraries and it does really does feel like a new, fresh set of energy, um, especially you like get a little, like a little treat from the cafe as well, then you actually do have a yeah. fresh set of energy. Um, mm. But yeah, no, definitely, because like it, it compared to staying in the one place throughout the whole day, I mean, some people, that might be what make, works for them and definitely do what works for you, regardless of what anyone else says, um, to an extent. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, uh, if I worked in the same place throughout the whole day, I would, I would really know and feel that I've been doing this for a long time, um, personally. Um, Megan, uh, so we talked about perfectionism earlier today and um how does the perfectionist um fit in at oxford and the workloads that oxford gives um it would be it it's very hard to maintain like the perfectionist standards um you know maybe maybe starting out in first year i had very high standards because you arrive at Oxford and you feel like you have to prove yourself. You feel like I have to prove that I deserve to be here. And so like all my work's got to be as good as it can be. Um, but you kind of just have to, you kind of have to teach yourself to let go a bit and just say, you know what, if not finishing this question is going to be better for my mental health, then I'm just not going to finish the question. And you have to not feel guilty about that. Um, mm. You have to learn like, not to feel guilty about not being able to do everything perfectly, 100% all of the time. And it's okay if you need to email your tutor and say, hey, I couldn't finish the problem sheet this week. That's mm. fine. You just have to like, really learn not to feel guilty about it because mm. I'm sure some people can do everything perfectly, but most people would really struggle. And so you have mm. to be kind to yourself and recognise, I just need to take a break. Yeah, and I... I mean, that's what like that's what the tutorial's for as well for those mm. for that bit that you couldn't do so like then like mm. going to the cheat with like having questions to ask and things that you haven't completed is in like the whole point um mm. but then i guess also from more understanding point of view it can be stressful if you feel like you haven't done enough work but then as you said i completely agree that almost all tutors are very understanding and you can always email mm. them um marnie well, how would you say about, like, would you agree with Megan? Or is there anything else you want to add? Hmm. I'd say, Eve, like, even more so, like, reconciling with yourself that like, the perfectionist just can't really survive in Oxford. Like, I think humanities, like, pushes that even, I think, further along. Because I think very much similar. I came into Oxford thinking, I've got, like, this has got to be, like, a work of art. But then I think with humanities, it, you can't. Like, you just can't. And I think very rarely do people kind of, get over kind of 70 72 out of 100 like not really that kind of um commonplace so I think very early on you get a very realistic sense that like it's not like kind of doing a levels like they're going to be kind of like coming close to getting like 100 percent um just the way that humanities is marked and the way in which and maybe for like the commentary actually taking a step back doing transition obviously that's a little bit more kind of black and white in terms of if you're just right or not but very generally speaking because I think the whole essence of humanity is subjective you yeah you just can't really be a perfectionist because again go back to um kind of the whole purpose of kind of tutorials that's where you can like 
I think like better your understanding and like go to those niche places that maybe you're really struggling to do in your research. But again, that's not going to translate into just because you know all this now, that's going to be like a hundred percent. Like you're still going to have to, it takes, I think so like several months and years to like really get in place for like, um, you're kind of content with the fact that like, um, you're just never going to get to like that hundred percent if you manage these, mm. but you do learn quickly that much even well. So like it's a weird mix and like you still can't help, but sometimes try and be a perfectionist. But I think for me, it's taken like, yeah, I'd say it's taken like the two years, but I've now just kind of been content that like, I realistically know that like, I'm not like, they mark it in the way in which I think you'd mark kind of a authentic, like genuine scholarly kind of like article. I think they kind of mark that same sort of degree of kind of um, like that highbrow sort of um, marking system. So yeah, I think it's just, yeah, unless you're kind of like a fully fledged academic by the time you get to Oxford, like I've now probably learned that like, it's not going to happen. Um, and that generally, yeah what you're producing is there's always kind of like doing your best is ultimately something like you always get like pushed down your throat but it's so true like you can really only do your best um yeah yeah exactly that's very true uh cliche but i guess like cliche for yeah. a reason um <laughs> but um what i was going to say um with the i think it's also there's like a point where when you're doing your work like a problem sheet or an essay and you feel like okay this time to stop because I have actually spent enough like too many hours on this and like knowing that I think that for me at least helps managing my workloads that um even though this isn't the degree that I wanted it to be but um like I've spent like I've done my like 40 or however many hours this week or I've done however many hours on this worksheet or all this one particular question like one question shouldn't take the same amount of time as the half of the other uh, problem sheet and like knowing that and having that security that I'm going to move on from <laughs> move on from this uh, I think it's something that we can all relate to for sure um so um coming towards the end now um this is quite an interesting question um so when is it time to ask help from uh from your peers who's studying the same subject or your tutors when you're doing your work so yeah when when do you think it's time to like you're struggling and when's it time to reach out basically um starting with money hmm, that's an interesting question um i'd actually go closer to say just whenever you want i feel like obviously maybe let's say quite crudely you've got like three days to do this essay maybe it give it a day to really try and get to groups dig into all the material really get a sense of like the scope of this particular like project or essay but like generally i'd say like any time is okay because I just think tutors know that you have like a life outside of just doing the work and I think everyone's obviously like just going to be particularly good at different things so there might just be different topics that not just not going to come as naturally to you so I would yeah I go as far as to say like really at any point as long as you've kind of had a really good dig at something before or if this has been like quite a continuous problem and it is more of a timing issue that's kind of developed over time like yeah over time um or if it is just a lack of motivation and that's something that's built up as well um or just generally kind of struggling to kind of like marry the content with the actual like maybe problem shoot or essay like yeah i think just to be really understanding i think they do as busy as they are they will put that the hours into you and they do really want you to succeed so i think reaching out 100 percent is really encouraged and i say like time isn't really the kind of i say kind of um entry point that i'd kind of target here i think it would be more just kind of like um just kind of whatever kind of works with you your own timeline of kind of like struggles and intensity of that struggle so yeah it could maybe be a few days into the new term it could be like a few weeks but i think ultimately um yeah seeking help far better than just yeah. trying to cope on your own yeah so and one of the things that you said is actually extremely uh, relatable uh for the sciences is how um yeah def i completely agree as well at any time um you can if you want to reach out um beforehand definitely do ideally after you've given a good crack at it because it's better, like i know maths and sciences but you just look at a question and you're like what is going on and it's very tempting to just instantly reach out for help but then like just sort of like calming yourself down yes it looks like a foreign language and it's supposed to be your degree and just like uh, <laughs> and just getting your teeth into it and then after that um reaching out for help i know my my sixth form teacher he wouldn't help us 
if he felt like we hadn't tried. But if he'd seen that we'd given it a decent crack, then he would be happy to help us. But he did. He turned away a lot of students, and I think that made us better for it, for sure. Um, Megan, would you agree with what Marnie said about, um, is there anything else to add? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, but just to say, don't leave it too late. Um, because, you know, you've had a really good crack at it. But as Marnie said, say it's like mm. three days you've got to do this essay. If you wait until two and a half days in, there's only so much they can do. So obviously make sure you've had a good crack at it, but just don't leave it too late. Um, mm. Because like tutors would be much happier to be able to arrange a time to go through something than have to just say, okay, well, the deadline's coming up, so let's just talk about it later. Yeah, it's exactly. much better. Just don't leave it too late. Yeah especially, yeah, especially if you're asking your tutor because they're going to be busy. You mm. have to wait for their email to come back. This is all time that could have been like you could have saved before. And I completely agree. And also one thing that we'll, we've all said about how tutors are very understanding is if anything um, like personal happens in our lives, like anything, and it like disrupts our disrupts our work, our tutors like wouldn't want to know that like, we're human beings as well. And um, and they're completely understanding that like life happens and like you might need to take some time off. Like in time. I know I've done that. I know other people who have. And um, and like it's definitely better because your tutors like. You just can't know that you're going through a tough time if you don't tell them. Um, or you don't, and you don't have to tell them the details. It's just as, as short as like, oh, something's happened. Um, I don't want to talk about it, but this is a tougher week. And then that's all you need to really say. Um, one last question I want to ask. Um, so um, there's a, I think sometimes whether it's a, you've got an essay to do. And you, so this is from a perspective where you haven't started your work yet and you've either got an essay to do or your whole problem sheet and it's very intimidating. How do you get yourself to start and how do you make that massive objective less um, frightening? Because I think that this is a universal feeling of how we don't want to, we don't want to start our work. It's very daunting. And how do you, how do you tackle that? Uh, Marnie, you want to go first? Mm. This is very personal to me. Sorry, yeah, I'm not sure this <laughs> will work for everyone, but good cup of coffee, get my favourite music going. Um, even as silly things as like, I don't, like wearing my favourite jumper or like feeling really good. It's all about, again, I think it's just linking it so much to like a mental thing. Like, mm. And I think also sometimes starting that work in the morning, like again, it's like not trying to start this in the evening and then you're like, oh, I kind of want to go to yeah. bed now, I want my own time. Very much like that sort of like, um early bird cliche like kind of the fresh kind of coffee good breakfast um making sure you do take that kind of like half an hour hour of that like ritual in the morning because then you've already taken that like lovely sort of time out of yourself and you feel so much more ready for it rather than if you're getting up a bit late you're stressed you're not having time to late and you're like just whipping on some like i know fairly unclean clothes and like rushing to the library to get a seat or something mm. so i think it's just it's all about how you like set yourself up because ultimately getting that motivation i think will come from going somewhere um for me it's often just not working in my room and going to a different environment but also just feeling really good when i'm doing that as well so mm -hmm. i think it comes to all the really small things that all like add up together um but in terms of actually like if it is actually just something you're really not interested in that is obviously when it does get really quite hard but i think that's when i think i'm lucky that for humanities i can then if topic i'm in i really discover a niche quite early on that's more interesting for me um, slightly difficult more difficult to do when you've just started because you don't know exactly the boundaries of how you can do that but again I think it all those sort of like mental like um, things you can do in the morning and then also trying to find that area in a topic which will keep making that work bearable um, so yeah if it's a particular genre that you don't like just trying to find a quite random sort of like um, technique that writers use that you can just really focus on so yeah I say that's nice. how I keep it quite um, keep motivation up and like yeah, keep working interesting nice there's a, a very nice like unique perspective on how like yeah how you personally like use like the idea of like make like feeling good to then like I, like then also like motivate yourself to do work so very interesting uh megan how would you what would you say about tackling tackling that impossible quantum mechanics question i mean you don't find quantum but anyways yeah back to the topic, <laughs> <laughs> back to the topic. <laughs> yeah um i think it does really depend on what it is because like with you know some problem sheets you just really don't understand the topic and it can be really really hard if you know you hate this topic 
I'm really bad at it. It can be really, really hard to motivate to do. Um, so I think, you know, if it's a problem sheet, it's really important to break it up into little bits. I find sometimes starting on the hardest question, start mm. at the end, because then you're like, you know what? It can't get any worse. Mm. This is the worst it can get. I don't understand anything, but this is the worst it can get. Um, and so maybe, you know, starting from the end might not work for you, but maybe changing how you approach the problem sheet could really help. So rather than thinking, I have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, if you can look through and find, oh, I can do question three straight away, that can kind of give you the little boost that you need to get the rest of it done. Mm. Um, so just changing how you approach the problem sheet can really, really help. Well, yeah, I, I really agree with that actually as well. Like well, um, with my cheat sheets, I would, and problem sheets i would um like read at least like read all the questions mm -hmm. and maybe next the lecture notes and then like circle which pages i think are relevant so then when mm -hmm. i go back to the question i've like notified what pages i need to go to to like find and maybe find the answer um and then there's that idea of like especially as a you know, like doing the hardest question in an exam first because when you can't do it and then you're doing other questions it is true that your brain is still in the background ticking mm. over that question and then you might have that light bulb moment so yeah like whereas if you'd left that hard question last and you haven't got that much time it's hard to you can't go on that you can't go for that walk and just sort of like think loosely and then the idea come to you because you don't have the time to do that um i think um and personally i like did some reading recently about how to tackle this like how to go from zero from not doing anything to starting your um, cheat sheet. And one thing I found, and I found that in extremely useful is um, instead of instead of like looking at like the mountain they've got to climb like, and thinking about, oh, I've got to do this whole problem sheet or this whole essay, um, they were suggesting that to, do, to just work for like 20 or 25 minutes and, um, and just like, say to yourself, oh, I'm just going to work for 25 minutes and that is like my aim take like a, then I take like a five minute break and then do another 25 minutes and then then you get yourself started the momentum will build after like 20 minutes you actually might feel actually I want to keep going I don't I'm feeling a bit this is restricting me and then all of a sudden you've like started like you're you've got this momentum and you're right into the thick of it now and um I think that way is sort of like it's a lot less daunting uh the, like working for 20 minutes is a lot less daunting than having to start and finish this essay or this problem sheet i find at least um but um i think that's yeah that's, that's all the questions that we've um gone through and that's all that we've got time for today um thank you so much um both of you for a very interesting conversation i mean this is one of those interesting podcasts that's actually really useful for prospective students and current students at uni so i'm sure like lots of people will find like what we um what you guys said um very interesting um but yeah um, and thanks for the viewers for watching whether it's on the on the podcasting platform or youtube or instagram um but yeah thanks marnie um thanks megan um and we'll see you guys next time <laughs>